Some very interesting stuff has been going on in the world of Fallout 76 as of late. There's been a few interesting discoveries. We actually got some additional details around a future update from Bethesda, a new Halloween event that is coming. But also, and one of the things I actually want to spend a majority of this video talking about is somebody discovered how to play Fallout 76 in, well, single player. Something that has been confirmed many times to not be a feature of this game in one way or another actually is. And it seems like it's been around for quite a while now. So we're going to go over all of that and just some general Fallout 76 news in this video. We are just a couple of weeks away from some major updates to this game. And if you guys do want to keep up to date with those, I do encourage you to subscribe. I'm going to have full coverage on that and the Wastelanders DLC. But something else I did want to give a bit of a shout out. A lot of times on this channel, I'll actually cover leaks or data mined information from this game. Take, for example, the up and coming Halloween DLC update we've known about that for a while thanks to some of these data miners. Well, a large group of these data miners are actually doing an AMA around this game on Sunday, October 13th. This will be taking place on the Fallout 76 subreddit. I'll have links to some of this information down below. It'll be at around 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and I encourage you guys to check it out. It'll be a pretty cool way to actually gain some additional insight or details around this game outside of just what you hear officially from Bethesda. But first and foremost, how do you play Fallout 76? 76 single player. So this is pretty much fully fledged single player or single player co-op in a way, but I managed to achieve, as you can see right here, being totally alone on a Fallout 76 server. Nobody else was coming to that server, it was just me unless I wanted some other people on there. Around the launch of this game, this was one of those things that was pretty highly requested, but hey, here it is. Although many of you might find, even if you want to do it, the barrier to entry will probably be a bit off-putting. So this functionality wasn't actually found by me. Oddly enough, I feel like this has been something some people have kind of stumbled upon but not connected all of the dots for a while now. If you remember all the way back to when people thought Fallout 76 had some kind of secret ending when you close all of the fissures in game, basically people sat on servers for extremely long periods of time, launching nukes at these fissures trying to get them to close. But something odd happened. After spending 5, 6, 7 hours on a server, some kind of glitch would pop up where people would stop getting added to the server and you actually couldn't even even invite your friends. And well, it turns out that's actually kind of the key to achieving single player or single player experience in this game. Just sit on the servers for a really long time. This naturally wasn't found by me, it was actually found by several of the people I mentioned before in that data mining AMA, and they're the ones that really introduced this to me. The process itself is pretty simple, just stay on a Fallout 76 server for a long time. Obviously that is something that is easier said than done, it seems like once a server hits 10 hours or so old, it'll actually go into this mode where new players will stop being added. So for a lot of people, when you go into Fallout 76, you just click play and then adventure mode, you'll be randomly placed on a server. But for some reason or another, servers have a functionality where after a certain amount of time, they'll stop actually adding new players at random like this. And it seems like the key time figure is around 10 hours or so. Obviously, it's kind of hard to get concrete numbers on that. So if you're spending a good chunk of my day sitting on a server, just just trying to not get kicked off for being AFK, I actually started to notice this happening. After a while, the player count started to dwindle from 10 people down to 5 or 6 people, and it was pretty clear that no new players were getting added onto the server. Although, naturally, that's only half of the problem. Now you kind of have a single player server state, in the sense that if everyone leaves, nobody else will be added, but one, you still have all the people that are still on the server, and two, their friends can join off of them based on the social menu. So after some more waiting for from me, everyone almost left. There's a few stragglers, but actually when it came down to the last dude, I just kindly asked him, hey, could you possibly just leave so I could test something? Okay, Let's go. I leave the server. Wait a minute, please. And he was kind enough to do so. And at this point, I had my own server. For some references, and maybe if you wanted to give this video a like, this actually took around six and a half hours for me to achieve. It's not as hard as you would think. I mean, I was literally just sitting here, waiting. Because eventually, the server will go into this state, and everyone will disconnect from it. And when you get a server like this, it's actually a really interesting experience. Server lag was basically the lowest I had ever felt in Fallout 76. Using things like VATS and combat just felt way 
snappier and actually a lot more enjoyable. Typically, there's a bit of a delay when it comes to using vats on enemies or even for your hit to actually register on an enemy, but with an empty server like this, things were snappy and working extremely quick. It actually made using vats feel a lot more powerful and even the quickness by which you could actually loot enemies and have their loot register was a lot faster. One of the other major things I wanted to test was actually the vault raids. These of course being notorious for being ridiculously laggy and well there was almost no lag. It was still a bit laggier than you would hope considering it was an empty server seeming to suggest that maybe part of that lag is from the instancing technology that is used here. But otherwise you could clear through these a lot easier and even doing otherwise tedious and very lengthy tasks like loading terminals or swiping those key cards was a lot quicker. Some of those processes that might have taken 5 to 10 seconds on a full server were effectively instant on this server. And overall, outside of just being kind of lonely, it was a pretty cool experience. But it also gives me quite a bit of insight. You have to imagine this is how Bethesda is testing a lot of their content internally, using their own private servers or potentially even LAN servers. And if things always felt quite as snappy as they did while I was alone in the server, I would definitely enjoy this game a bit more. And I definitely would have enjoyed the vault raids a lot more. Although, and this probably won't come as a shock to anyone, playing Fallout 76 by yourself is actually incredibly boring. It's a multiplayer built game. Many of the in-game systems are only useful with other players. So even though I would say playing just solo was a very interesting and kind of eye-opening experience in some ways, I would say the real premier aspect of a solo play server is just playing with only the people you want to. As one of the other options you do have is actually to invite people or for people to join off of your friends list. New players won't be added to the server by default, but someone can just click on you from the social menu and still join the server, even if it's just you on it. So after a little bit, we had five to 10 people on this just messing around together on our own little world and this was really awesome. Unfortunately, after all of this waiting, I actually got the friend ad bug. It's basically a bug in game where you can't actually accept or reject friend requests, but a simple workaround is just to get one of your other friends to accept all the friend requests and invite people that way. But otherwise, yeah, you could have maybe five to ten people on this and have your own little private Fallout 76 community. And naturally, you could pass this along after spending seven, eight hours on the server I was kind of over it, so I added some people to the server and kind of passed the torch per se so they could have my single player server. Although it seemed like for some reason, after about five or six hours in this solo play state, it actually reset. Further testing is needed around this. There's been other reports of people having it for a while and not actually having it reset even after like 30 hours, but for some reason, this server eventually started adding new people onto it, but still gave you a pretty nice and lengthy five, six hour play session where you could just have whoever you want on here. So yeah, if you wanted to play Fallout 76 by yourself in a single player fashion, you can and this is how. Obviously it has quite a big barrier to entry, you have to wait quite a while. If you find a server that's already been up or is pretty old, you can achieve this a bit quicker, but naturally being able to tell how old a server is can be kind of difficult. But otherwise, if you just pass this along, it can be an interesting way to experience the game with just your close group of friends with minimal server lag. Although outside of that, looking ahead at the future of Fallout 76, Bethesda has revealed and officially announced their Halloween event coming to this game, that being known as Mischief Night, a new seasonal event that will be running from October 29th at 12 p.m. Eastern Time until November 5th at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. It's described how this event will be taking place at the White Springs Hotel, which actually will get a bit of a redesign, a bunch of Halloween-themed props will be set up, and I actually think it looks pretty cool. It's described how some of the challenges here will be things like painting graffiti, on some of the walls, blowing up some of the cars around the resort to piss off the guards, forking some of the lawns, and some other activities that aren't explicitly named, although we've seen them through some of the data mines. But there'll also be some candy bowls at the various cottages that are placed at White Springs, where you have the option to actually trick or treat or even play a nasty trick. Although it is also described how the robots at White Springs will be on high alert, so you should bring some stuff to defend yourself. It seems like combat with some of the robots here will be a core part of this. Which should be interesting, the White Springs robots tend to be a bit higher level than any of the enemies we've seen in these past seasonal events, so it could be cool if this has a bit more of a challenge than some of the past ones from a combat perspective. But it's also described if we actually do successfully complete some of the quotas set by the head robot, aka just completing this event adequately, you'll get some XP and loot, and also a chance at new themed items like costumes, jack-o'-lanterns, and more. But also a pretty cool feature, if you actually wear costumes that are already in-game, 
like one of the spooky costumes that's already in Fallout 76, some of the stuff you bought off the Atomic Shop or the Fastop Mass, you'll actually earn double progress towards the objectives during this event. So all around, this seems like it's going to be a fun one. I'm pretty curious to see what kind of rewards there will be. Obviously, there's a lot of fun stuff you could add to this game in a Halloween theme. Unfortunately, as of yet, nothing has been data mined. But also, something interesting to point out is during this time, Project Clean Appalachia has been continuing. This basically being a community-wide event where Bethesda gives us some kind of objective and we have to complete it as a community. As we do it and complete some of the stretch goals, we'll get rewards from them. Right now, the goal is to kill as many Scorched as you can, and people have been active doing this. They already won a sale with the legendary vendor as well as a couple of free things. Although, and this actually ends on the 14th of October, the final stretch goal, which is seeming kind of wary, I'm not sure if it's actually going to be hit, is a 50% off sale with the legendary vendor, and that's actually a pretty hefty one. But that would actually require killing 13 and a half million Scorched in just three days, which is a bit of a stretch. I'm not sure it's actually possible, but hey, we'll see. And if you want to play your part, you can kill some Scorched in game to get what is going to be actually a pretty big sale. Although something else I wanted to point out around this, I think this is pretty interesting because it could be kind of reflective of the current player count of Fallout 76. Killing 21 million Scorched in just 10 days is actually kind of insane. Obviously, it's not a totally dead game if you're putting up numbers that high. It's of course the cumulative of all three consoles, PC, Xbox One, and PS4, but even still, between that and the 500,000 Scorch Beasts that were killed, it still seems like, at least in adventure mode, there's a healthy amount of people playing this. Even though player counts are lower, they're definitely not desolate. I still notice there are no problem filling servers, at least in the adventure mode. You could pretty regularly find 20 plus people all of the time, unless of course you're trying to get a single player server like I talked about earlier in this video. Outside of that, Bethesda does mention how patch 14 is coming a little bit later in October. They mentioned that in next week's Inside the Vault article, which always comes on a Thursday, they'll give us further details around that patch, meaning that the patch is at least one week away. But it seems fairly likely that patch 14 will be the last patch before the Wastelanders updates do begin. So it'll be a really important one to keep your eye on. One, because we want to see what balance changes are made to the game. But two, it'll be curious to see if any Wastelanders content is added and thus data mined. As of right now, we have next to nothing. There's almost no Wastelanders content in the files of Fallout 76. We don't have any big leaks like we did previously with the Battle Royale mode leaking. Either way, if you guys do want to subscribe, I will make sure to keep you up to date with all of that. As always, again, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, found it informative, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.